the story that you are about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts featuring characters, events, or places that has played a role in shaping history. Please sit back and listen as I recite this narrative for you. La Isla de las Monicas, or the Island of the Dolls, is located just a few miles south of Mexico City. The island is littered with hundreds, if not thousands, of hanging, decaying, and decapitated dolls. While the exact number of decaying dolls has not been recorded, the story of how the island became infested with dolls is far more fascinating. According to legend, the first doll was hung when the island's sole inhabitant discovered the body of a drowned girl and her doll. But Eda hung up her doll as a kind of offering, fearing vengeance from the girl's spirit. Then, fearful that one doll would not satisfy the spirit, he continued to collect and hang dolls for decades, until his untimely death. The Island of the Dolls is now a popular, albeit macabre, tourist attraction. A visit to the island, located 11 miles from the heart of Mexico City, is only a winding riverboat ride away. Don Julian Santana Barrera abandoned his wife and children in the 1950s to live alone on an island in Tuxelo Lake. His motivations are hazy at best, but it quickly became clear that Santana Barrera was not always of sound mind. Don Julian was born in Xochimilco, a town located just out of Mexico City, on the ruins of Aztec canals. Xochimilco is a lovely, vibrant city that has been dubbed the Venice of Mexico by some. The island's new caretaker visited the neighboring Barrio de la Asunción on occasion to sell his vegetables and enjoy the popular pulque, an alcoholic beverage made from the fermented sap of the agave plant. However, his ever-increasing superstitions drove him to begin preaching the Bible around town where it was assumed that only anointed priests were permitted to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. As a result, Barrera's preaching was not well received by the Catholic communities he visited. He was beaten up a lot, which caused him to become even more reclusive over time. He was eventually expelled by the sector, and he remained on his island. Barrera came across the dead body of a drowned girl and her doll one day. According to legend, she drowned while entangled in the canal's lilies, and her body was discovered on the banks of the Santampa Chinampas. Barrera was superstitious and deeply religious, and he became concerned that the dead girl's spirit haunted the island. He decided to hang her doll from a tree to appease her potentially vengeful soul, and thus began a habit he would not be able to break for the rest of his life. Barrera retrieved dolls that had washed up in the canal's lilies and saved them from the garbage wherever he went to keep the girl's spirit happy. These discarded dolls were hung up all over the island in whatever shabby condition he found them in. Some of the dolls he'd find were in various states of disrepair, and others were just bits of a doll. Headless dolls, limbless dolls, dolls with missing eyes, all the kinds of dolls that give you nightmares. He later began trading his homegrown fruits and vegetables for dolls. According to those close to him, Barrera was driven by an unseen force that completely transformed him. He was apparently deeply affected by the fact that he was unable to save the little girl's life. Barrera was haunted by a girl whispering, I want my doll, and footsteps in the middle of the night. He also claimed that after the girl's death, he began hearing voices and whispers around him, as well as other strange occurrences, such as finding the doll hanging off a different tree than the one he had left it in. Another story goes that he had gone insane and mistook the dolls for real children, whom he pulled from the canal and attempted to resurrect. Barrera also discovered some dolls in better condition. He dressed up these dolls and made them a special little home, though when you open the door to the shed they're in, it still looks like something out of a horror movie. He also amassed a collection of accessories that he would put on them. Augustina and Monik were his favorite dolls. While it isn't clear what he went through in his hut in the middle of the jungle, miles away from civilization, one thing is for certain, it was terrifying. Barrera was discovered dead in 2001, drowned in the same spot where he claimed to have discovered the dead girl and her doll nearly 50 years before. Many people claimed that the dolls, 
which were inhabited by tortured spirits, plotted to murder the old man. Others believe that Barrera's death was an accident and that the dolls have taken over his role as the island's caretaker since his death. The legend of Don Julian Santana Barrera's dolls is still hotly debated. His relatives believe that the story is fabricated to provide an enticing backdrop for his efforts. Others believe a girl drowned there and haunted him until his death. Whether or not the terrifying tales are true, the entire island is still littered with dolls in various states of decay. Barrera never bothered to clean or repair the dolls, as evidenced by the dirt-covered surfaces and eroding materials. He accepted them as they were and hung them up with missing eyes or torn limbs, and they've since been subjected to years of weather and wear and tear. Barrera also kept a cabin full of dolls that he would dress up in everything from headdresses and sunglasses to a slew of other accessories. Curious visitors would make their way to Barrera's little kingdom as word of the mysterious island spread, where he welcomed them with open arms. This strange sight became popular after he discovered that visitors were willing to pay a small fee for a guided tour. And after Barrera was discovered dead in 2001 in the same location where he claimed to have discovered a dead girl 50 years earlier, it grew into the commercial hotspot that it is today. The most pressing question is the identity of the little girl who died. Many people, including Barrera's family, doubted that he ever met the girl, though whether they believe he made it up, imagined the experience, or was mistaken is unclear. What is certain is that, whether or not the girl existed, Barrera dedicated the rest of his life to her. According to local legend, the dolls moved their heads, arms, and even opened their eyes. Some witnesses claim they heard the dolls whispering to each other, while others on a boat near the island claim the dolls enticed them to visit the island. Both tours to the island of the dolls have become popular in Mexico City over the last two decades. Though Barrera saw his collection as a collection of beautiful protectors, many tourists find the island strange and terrifying. Locals claim that the spirits on Mexico's Dal Island come alive at night and converse with one another. Some visitors bring their own dolls to show their respect and to seek blessings. Despite the fact that the island has become a tourist attraction, it all began when Barrera made his home alone in the sliver of undeveloped land. Some believe that when he died, his spirit joined those who are said to haunt La Isla de las Municas. Barrera was apparently collecting dolls because he was possessed by an evil spirit that still resides on that island. People who are extremely religious or superstitious are now advised to avoid the area near Isla de las Muñecas. But people who are keen on making a few pesos will bring visitors right onto the island's shores. Barrera's nephew, Anastasio Santana Velasco, currently controls the island. Velasco, along with a number of other companies, has been offering paid boat tours around the outskirts of Mexico City, which is a jungle divided by canals since 2002. The most popular stop on that tour is the Island of the Dolls. Aside from hundreds of dolls, the island also has a small museum with articles about the island and its previous owner from local newspapers. There's a store in three rooms, one of which appears to be a bedroom. Santana's first doll is housed in this room. Some visitors leave offerings around the doll in exchange for miracles and blessings, while others change their clothes and continue to worship it. Hey everyone, I just wanted to say that I am incredibly grateful that you took time out of your schedule to listen to my narration. This is Naki of Twisted Mind, wishing you a great rest of your day. Salamat.